Hey guys, we're back at it. So in this video, we're going to be working on uh, section number 27, which is the firewall. Um, I am going to go ahead and set up the firewall to use a Lycoming uh, engine. There are options. So if you know you're not going to use a Lycoming, like you don't drill a couple of the holes, I'm going to go ahead and assume I'm going to get a Lycoming. I know we've talked a bunch of before about getting, you know, a Chevy engine or something else, some other power plant. But I think I want to go ahead and get the Lycoming, the, the quote, Lycosaurus Rex. Um, but that's what I'm working on in the background. You've seen a little of this video before. Um, but here in a second, I'm going to talk about the plans themselves and what I wish the plans would do a little differently. So anyways, let's get to it. All right, so we are on section 27. So this is the firewall. Um, engine is going to be on the other side of this. This is, this is you know, the, the fuselage is here. Uh, gone through, I've clecoed everything together. I had a hell of a time finding all these parts. Um, my... <laughs> my you know clever plan of putting everything together by section and, and storing them on the shelves and everything i think it's a good idea but it uh, sort of like combat you know plans in combat it doesn't survive the first contact with the enemy and in this case the enemy is this book uh, you know the instant you go looking for a part you move a part to get the other part that's under it and now that part is not where you you know uh, so had i had a hell of a time finding a couple of these parts uh, got them all in here though. I know I have everything because I inventoried so at least I know it's over there somewhere But I got it all together. I've got everything on this stainless steel the aluminum I've kept the bluing on the aluminum. I will have to go through pull the bluing off and then uh, This is one of those areas where I am gonna prime so I'm gonna prime all of the aluminum because it's resting against even though this is I believe stainless steel Stainless steel and aluminum can touch one another, I believe, and I think their their corrosion index is like nothing. But still, it's probably a better idea to go ahead and prime it. So I'm going to do that. Obviously, these that are white, these are powder coated, so I don't have to prime those. Not going to. Uh, but <clears throat> I've got to do a lot of uh, a lot of drilling, a lot of match drilling. Um, I got to go find all of the nut plates, the various nut plates that go on here and do those first. Now that I've got it assembled, next step is the nut plates. And <clears throat> this is one of those areas where I wish at the top of the plants, this is one of my dream, you know, if I had my druthers, um, I'd rather it had this on it. And that is at the top of every page, just a real short list of all the parts this page uses so that I could gather them all up and have them, <clears throat> you know, ready for me to, to work with. That is, uh, that's, that's the one thing, because sometimes it'll, it'll say, you know, where is it? You know, final drill, the holes for the two K01114 nut plates. Okay, so then I know I have two of them, right? But other times it will say, final drill number 40, all of the nut plate attach holes. Well, what are all the nut plate attach holes? How many are there? How many should I see? Well, if I had a list up here that says you're going to need two of these nut plates and six of those nut plates, then you'll know, oh, now I know how many. Um, so that's one of the things that I wish the plans had was just a, just a little index or a key at the top of each page saying, here are all the parts that this particular page will deal with. Now, obviously <clears throat> they have this blow up on the very front of each section of what you're gonna work on and what it looks like. But, you know, you have to go through each thing to, to, you know, to, to get the part, but that's still only the major parts. It doesn't show you all the little stuff like nut plates and, and sometimes some of the other small parts, it doesn't always accurately show what they are. So again, they could just put that here at the front. I don't know. It's, it's extra work. I get why they don't do it. It's a lot of work. And, and maybe they, they want you to instead go through every single step with a fine tooth comb to make sure you get all the bits. So, okay, but still. Anyways, all right, I got I got to do some final drilling on this sucker, uh, and yeah, steel. By the way, this stuff sucks. Uh, it will dull your dull your tools, so just expect to have to get new drill bits and whatnot. So. I had someone ask about light scarring caused by the bucking bar on internal ribs or the internal skin uh, or even the external skin, really, uh, when you're, you know, you got it up there and you, you just kind of rub against it, kind of scratches it a little bit. 
if this is gonna be a big problem. As I understand it, and I'm willing to say I'm wrong, please comment down below, it's no big deal. Uh, externally, if you have some light scratching or whatnot, I mean, you see a lot of people, and I did this in the beginning, they'll leave, they'll leave all the bluing on they can except for like a little strip that they use like a, a weld, a soldering iron or a heat gun to get those strips in place. I found that that was, more work than was really necessary. Uh, I did watch a guy paint his plane. The first thing he did is went at it with a Scotch-Brite uh, sponge or, or uh, like a pad and you know basically put a, a layer of scratching all over it. Then he painted over it and you never saw it. It was actually a really cool process. All of those little scrapes and scratches went away. So with regards to outside, if you're going to just polish your plane, then yeah, that's something you need to consider uh, and worry about. However, if you're gonna be like 99.9% .9 of the rest of us, which is to paint the exterior plane, those scratchings, don't even worry about it. Inside, same thing. If you're priming and you've scratched some of the primer off, one, I would say you're using the wrong kind of primer, but two, if you wanna put a light sheen of primer back on it, it should be fine. Unless you're making like massive dents or bending things or breaking stuff, I really wouldn't consider it or, or worry about it at all. Again, for the rest of you, if you have any comments or observations on what to do about light, I don't wanna call it damage, but you know, marks, if you will, from your bucking bar, comment down below. I'd love to hit your opinion. Here I'm disassembling after drilling all of the aluminum uh, in preparation to prime those parts. Uh, but before I can do that, I have to go through and dimple everything. Um, there are a lot of holes on here and I don't wanna show it because it, it just seems endless. So I skip ahead of that really quickly. Once I, once I get all the holes dimpled, I then go through and begin countersinking uh, all, the, uh, all the various uh, parts, which is basically everything that sits against the dimpled aluminum. Again, it's a seemingly endless task. Um, and you can, you can see once I do assemble everything that those parts have been primed. But first, I go away for a week. Hey guys, I'm back out here. I'm really tired. Uh, my entire week last week consisted of me getting up at 4 a.m., driving for over two hours, to sit in an eight hour class uh, and then, you know, with a two, two and a half hour drive home, depending on traffic, uh, all of that, you know, it's a government organization. So all of that, could... hmm, that's new. Anyway, all of that could have been summed up in like a 20 minute PowerPoint. Uh, but what do you do? I get paid mileage either way and, and uh, you know, good training, send me to all of it. But that means I haven't been able to work on the plane. So I'm back out here now working on it. What you can see in the background is, is me drilling all the holes and getting the firewall forward all prepped and ready to go. Um, it, it's nothing you haven't seen a million times before. You will see that I have gone ahead and primed all of the parts that actually attach to that stainless steel piece. I know I'm a little inconsistent on the whole prime or no prime thing. Uh, this is one area where because of the different metals, even though it's stainless steel, and I'm pretty sure aluminum and stainless steel can sit together forever and never corrode, um, just in case. So uh, pretty important area, so I figured I'd try to do exactly what the plans say to do. So anyways, that's what's going on there, and now we're going to get back to it and put that sucker together. Okay, so I'll talk to what I'm doing here and why I'm doing this back riveting as opposed to any other method uh, here in a second, but um, I have one rivet that is being problematic and that's because it's near this this piece right here and it's jammed up right in there. Uh, you can see right here in the picture that this is, that's really tight. There's not a lot of room there. So, um, thinking about how to get this, my back riveting piece won't work because I've got this piece of plastic on here and they sell some without this piece of plastic where it's just this metal you know bit uh, uh, set is what they call these but I don't have one of those so how do I get that rivet um, of course there's always the trusted tried and true uh, blind rivet method that I could go get a blind rivet, pop it, and it'd be fine. There's enough rivets on here that one blind rivet wouldn't hurt it. However, um, I would rather bucket. And so to that end, I think I'm going to try to take 
my bucking bar, place it in here, and then use probably my padded mushroom, uh, or maybe just this, this set right here, um, and try to use this to buck into the rivet bar, which bucks against the plate, and we'll see if that actually sets it. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Um, this is a, a, a tight area. I can't get my squeezer in here for this same problem, so yeah. So let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. Well, crap. That didn't work. You can see here in this picture, uh, I do have one rivet that is very clearly standing proud. Uh, for whatever reason, I just could not get it to sit flush. There's just so much going on right there. Uh, it felt like my back rivet plate was falling away and it wasn't, I mean, it just everything was going wrong. There's just no good way to get it super tight right there. So I am gonna go ahead and use a blind rivet. I have the, uh, what is it, CS 4-5s, I think, for that spot, because it is a 4-5 that goes there. I have some, and so I'm just going to use one of those. It's one blind rivet uh, in that tight corner. That's no big deal. Um, with the rest of it, I am using a, 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 a back riveting technique to get in there and put these things in. Uh, I find that is the most easy and convenient way to do it. Uh, I'm going through and I'm putting the rivets in, I'm placing the back rivet plate on there, and then I'm using very strong magnets to hold it in place when I flip the whole thing over, make sure it's got a, a, a good seat. Uh, and because of the flanges that are hanging down on that piece, I have to kind of elevate the whole thing on a piece of wood so I can work it. And it's working out fine. And you can see here, I've got nice tight rivets up against it, and I'm happy with how those are coming out. Just that one rivet just didn't want to play nice. So creative problem solving, I'm going to fix that with a blind rivet and move on. Pop rivets. <laughs> um, I have been informed by more than one person that the term pop rivet uh, is antithetical to aviation. Um, that, you know, I'm a bit of a blasphemer for using it uh, and the correct term I should be using is blind rivet. Well, believe it or not, uh, pop rivet is just another, just another name for blind rivet. In 1934, uh, the George Tucker Islet Company was approached by an aircraft manufacturer, which I, was, I couldn't figure out which one it was. They needed help in developing a fastener uh, that could be set from just one side of you know, the material. Uh, this rivet that they ultimately invented would become what we all know as the registered trademark pop rivet. Um, it's, it's named for the popping sound it makes during installation, right? Now the trademark is now owned by uh, Stanley Black & Decker. But whether you're looking for an actual trademark, you know, specifically a pop rivet or a blind rivet of any other brand, chances are you'll automatically either say or use the term pop rivet. Sort of like Velcro or Kleenex or any of those other brand terms, pop rivet has kind of become synonymous uh, with any blind rivet in that product category. So even though I do say pop rivet a lot instead of blind rivet, it's technically not incorrect, but I'll try to be better. All right, so what you guys just finished watching me do um, was this uh, firewall forward stuff. So the engine is going to be here. So if this stands up, um, the engine's on that side, rest of the plane this way. Uh, there's going to be some pieces that come off here uh, that I'm going to work on next. I'm not sure if it's going to be in this video or not. Um, but yeah, back riveting seemed to work really well. This is now very stout. I'm actually impressed. Even with just Clecos though, when you had it all Cleco together, it felt a little floppy whoppy, right? I was like, eh. But once I got all the rivets in place, good to go. Um, let's see, mistake admitting time, because it wouldn't be one of my videos without me admitting making a mistake. Uh, right here, uh, this, I'm supposed to, you've got these uh, bars, I don't know what you call these, these supports, and then this will you know, be here, and then there's going to be a big panel that goes up here, and this all fits right here. Um, 
And then you've got these kind of gussets that go up here and kind of bring more stability together. Well, uh, I wasn't supposed to have riveted uh, this set of rivets right here yet. Oops. So, I, my bad. <laughs> I'm going to have to drill some of those out and, uh, you know, fix that. I, I hate drilling things out. I hate, I hate having to do work twice. But I, I even remember thinking while doing this, uh, you know, do I only need to leave this channel? Yeah, just this channel. I completely forgot about this piece. And then I looked over once it was all done. I was like, ah, crap. So, oh, well, mistake. Mistakes happen. No big deal. Just drill it out, put it back in. Uh, other than that, this came off without a hitch. Uh, like I said, I had these two, two uh, rivets here next to these supports that I felt I, I just didn't have a good way to do it. So I used a blind rivet that you know, Vans actually provides blind rivets, so I just used one of those. Other than that, like I said, I'm happy with how this came out. It's pretty stout. This area up here is still a little floppy because there's no support up here, but everything else is stiff. And then when you add the, the couple more uh, channels on here and run all, all this stuff out, it's going to be even stiffer. There are some, there's a square right here that I think is like the oil cooler, maybe? I'm not sure. That's not on here yet, so that's why there are some holes that aren't filled. But other than that, this came out really nicely. I'm, I'm very happy with my method. Um, and to just go over that briefly, I did it all via back rivet. I've got my heavy duty back rivet plate. I would place the plate on this side and then I've got a number of magnets, these long bar magnets, one of which has split because I accidentally let it, you know, schnick against another magnet just shattered into pieces. But put this magnet up under here and because this is not magnetic, but this is. It would sit here and hold that piece in place, just as an example, so that when I flipped it around, as I'm moving it around, you can see my back rivet plate is still just in place. It's actually being held there. And then I could lay it on this, these you know pieces of wood that elevated it because of this, this flange right here. You know, I can't lay it flat. And that worked really well. So um, yeah, happy with how it came out. Took a little time. I mean, there's a lot of putting it down, flipping it over, you know, doing stuff and flipping it back over. There's a lot of that, but oh well. Probably if you had two people, you could just set it up and get after it on either side. Probably be a lot quicker. But uh, again, I'm trying to do everything myself without having to need another person, uh, which probably in the long run is unrealistic. But you know, hey, I'm out here with all my friends, right? I'm an idiot. Anyways, just thought I'd share. That's what's going on here. And so now I'm going to read the instructions and figure out, you know, this piece that goes here. Anyways, guys, that's where I'm going to end this one. Thank you so very much. If you guys want to help support me, jump over to my Patreon page. And for as little as a dollar a month, you guys can donate and uh, help this monster come together. Now I got to run to the gym, get some of this fat old and slow off of me. Fun.